Hey everyone, in today's video, we are talking all about mental math. Now, in kindergarten, first and second grade, we spend a lot of time teaching students concrete skills, as we should, so they can develop that number sense and those beginning operations and really understand what's going on. But as time goes on, we do want them to develop their fluency and their mental math strategies. Now, in today's video, I'm going to share four of the math strategies I like to teach for my first and second grade students, especially as they are heading towards the end of the year and as we develop our number talks, our math talks. So in each of these strategies, I'm going to share how to do it, examples, and I'm gonna explain a little bit about what it looks like when you are having this type of number talk with your students. So if you're ready to dive into this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. All right, now by the end of first grade, your students are working with more than one add-in, they're working with three and four add-ins, and they're even working on some beginning two-digit plus two-digit operations. They're working on two-digit addition and two-digit subtraction. So we want our students, while of course we want this to stay concrete, have them use all sorts of manipulatives, we do want to use our math talk time, our number talk time, to get them thinking about different strategies that might help their mental math move a little faster. Now what I love is that students, if you write an equation on the board, they're going to solve it many different ways. I don't know if you've seen those Facebook posts where it's like, type out down below how you solved this problem and it'll be like a two digit or three digit addition problem. And the way that different people solved it, they're like so entirely different. Some people are using the standard algorithm. Maybe they started in the ones place, carried the one, all that stuff. Other people broke it apart by place value. What's going on inside someone's head is different person to person. So there are some strategies that your students are already doing, but they might not have a name for it. During this math talk time is when you will actually go ahead and help your students name these strategies and also explicitly teach some of these strategies in case students want to gather them and kind of develop them themselves. So let's dive into the strategies. All right, mental math strategy number one is one of the most important ones to teach to your students, and it is decomposition. Now this is gonna be kind of a 1A and a 1B because there's two different ways in first and second grade that your students are going to use decomposition. So let me go ahead and throw up a problem up here. So here we have nine plus seven plus five plus two. You might wanna use this exact example for a number talk with your first and second grade students. Go ahead and throw that up on the board and then ask your students to go ahead and solve it mentally, no paper, no pencil, and also notice how I wrote it horizontally. That's important for these types of number talks um, to kind of discourage from the algorithm. And then ask students, how did you solve this? Now, like I said, there's two different ways students might use decomposition. They might use it to A, make friendly numbers. And a friendly number might be something like a multiple of 10 or a doubles fact, a doubles plus one fact. Numbers that they can easily add together or subtract. Um, and B is going to be by place value. So decomposition, students can do it by friendly numbers and by place value. Now, looking at this right here, students might start left to right, and they might say, okay, nine plus seven equals 16. And then to make a friendly number, they might decompose this five into a four and a one. So now they have 16 plus four, they know that is easily a 20, plus a one, plus a two, 23. Now that might seem like a lot of work, but actually what you're doing here is you are just going to be talking aloud a way to go ahead and solve a problem. And many of your students might have actually done that. And when you give them time to explain their steps step by step, this is what it will look like when you write it out. This names the strategy and shows students what it looks like. Now, another student might have seen the seven here and the five and the two, and they might have decided, wait a sec, five plus two equals seven. So in their head, they're doing nine plus seven plus seven. They know that doubles fact, that friendly number, nine plus 14, and then they can go ahead and do this math. However, they've gone ahead and solved that to equal 23. 
three. Both get us the same answer, both using decomposition, just different ways of using friendly numbers. Now let me show you that other way we can use decomposition. Here's an example of a problem I might throw up there at the end of first grade or sometime in second grade and ask students just to think, how can they solve this problem in their head? No paper, no pencil. So if we were gonna use decomposition for friendly numbers like we just did, I could see, wait a second, this is almost a friendly number, right? All I need is a one here. So if I take a one from here and make this 46 plus one plus 19, I can add my one in 19 to get 20, and then 46 plus 20, again, easy numbers, friendly numbers, 66. Now there's another way I can do this. This is with my place value. I could see that 47 is actually 40 plus seven and 19 is 10 plus nine. I can break them apart by place value. So again, in my head, this is me just notating everything that's happening in your student's head. So what I can do is I can take the 40 and the, the, 40 and the 10 to make 50. I know seven plus nine equals 16. I get the same answer of 66. All right, so decomposition is one of the first strategies I teach to my students. It is a great one because it really shows that your students understand how to break apart numbers flexibly and how, you know, 47 is 46 plus one, but it's also 40 plus seven. There's just many different ways they can make a number. And also just to illustrate, decomposition also works for subtraction as well. I find that it's not as commonly used, um, but it's still an important one to kind of showcase in case students students pick it up. You never know which strategy is going to stick with students later on in their life. And just to show you what it would look like with subtraction, let's pretend we have 64 minus 28. That might look pretty tricky. I can already see that I have to do some regrouping. It might scare students a little bit. So they can actually break this 28 into 24 and four. And then they could go ahead and do 64 minus four is going to equal 60 minus, so they've used that four, minus the 20, again, some easy friendly numbers here, to make the 40, and then they just have 40 minus four to get 36. So decomposition works for addition and subtraction. All right, mental math strategy number two you're going to wanna to teach to your students is called compensation. I wrote that right up here, and this one again works for addition and subtraction. So for some examples, I have, let's start with this one because this would be a typical first and second grade question you might throw up on the board. 39 plus four. Now students can of course count up because four isn't too much higher to count up with, but what some of your students might be doing mentally without even knowing it is using a form of compensation. And when they're doing that, they're saying, okay, wait a sec, let's make this a friendly number. 39 plus one is gonna be 40. 40 plus four is 44. But we need to compensate for that one we added, so now we need to subtract it at the end. 43. So instead of just counting up, we can just add one here to make it an easier number to add. And then since we've added it, at the end we need to take it away. We need to make it zero, right? Here's another example, 37 plus 58. Now we could do this to either number, but to compensate and make this a little friendlier numbers, we can do, let's add three over here. So we can make this plus three. We can make this 40 plus 58 to get 40 plus 58 is going to be 98. And then again, if we added that three, we need to just take it away. We need to take it away to make it a zero because if we add plus three and minus three to the same equation, we're essentially adding zero. So when we do minus three, now we have 95. Compensation is a great way for your students to quickly use some mental math. Um, and they could have done that with the 60 here too. They could have added two instead, added the numbers and then taken it away at the end. They would have got that same result, that same sum of 95. Like I said, compensation also works for subtraction as well, but it is slightly different. So if we're looking here at 64 minus 28, again, students might be overwhelmed thinking, okay, I know we have to regroup here. Um, how can I do this quickly? using some mental math. Well, what they can do is they can turn this number into an easy 30, a friendly number of 30. So by adding two, 
So now we have 64 minus 30. That's much easier to do some mental math. So 64 minus 30 is 34. But then when we're doing subtraction, this is important, if we added two on this side of the equal sign, we actually have to add two on the other side. We're not taking it away. We're not zeroing it out with subtraction. And I'm gonna explain why in step number four. But just know that if your students are going to compensate using subtraction, if they added two here, they need to add two at the end to get their difference. So again, compensation can work with addition and subtraction. With addition, if you have added something, you need to take it away. Or if you subtracted something, you need to add it at the end. And with subtraction, whatever you're doing, either subtracting or adding to a number to make it friendlier, you have to do the same thing on the other side of the equal sign. All right, strategy number three is only going to work for subtraction, and this strategy is called adding up. And many of your students might already know this one. Here's an example, 20 minus 17, that if I were teaching to my first graders, instead of having them line it up any other way, the adding up strategy works really easily here because these numbers are relatively close together. So I teach them to put 17 in their head and count up until they get to 20. So 18, 19, 20. Sometimes if they're actually still drawing it, they can go ahead and draw circles. I always tell them circles or dots until they get to that number. So 18, 19, 20, three, their answer is three. Now, when you are doing this number talk with your students, some of your students are going to say, I count it up or they're just gonna say, I just knew the difference. But you really want to push them and ask them, well, how did you know? What did you start with? Did you start with the number 17 or did you start with the number 20? As you get used to these number talks and writing them down the exact ways that I'm writing them here, you can either ask them if they did their fingers to represent it, you could draw some dots, showing them how they did it, naming the strategy, showing them what it looks like, having other students name somebody else's strategy is a great way for students to develop mathematical sense. This way they're able to actually reason and talk about numbers in a mathematical way instead of just giving you this kind of blank stare and they're just like, well, I knew it. I knew how to do it. I'm like, well, you solved it some way. Let's talk about it. So we do things like number talks all year long, but towards the end of the year, this is what our number talks look like. They're very operation based. All right, moving to a harder one for maybe second grade students or some students that maybe in a small group could do this in like first grade. 64 minus 28. Again, I'm seeing I need regrouping little stressful. Let's figure out how to do this mentally with the adding up strategy. Now to represent it here, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Here we have 64 minus 28. And for the adding up strategy, what they're going to do is students are going to add little numbers until they get from this number, the subterhand, to the mini end. So they can do this in pieces. If they don't know right away, they might say, okay, wait a second. Let's, I know I can add two here. So we're adding up two, that's gonna bring us to 30, right? Okay, now I'm at 30, I still need to get to 64, I'm not there yet. So I could add a big jump of 30, cause 30 plus 30 is gonna give us 60. And then I only need to get to four, okay. Four more is gonna get us to 64. And where is the difference here, right? The difference is right here. 30 plus the two, 32, plus four more is 36. So in your students' heads, once they've learned this strategy, they might say, okay, let me add up here. So I can get to 30, I know I added two there, I can do a big jump, 30 plus 30 is 60, now I'm at 32, add four more, 36. Again, this is gonna sound tricky, but once your students get used to these strategies, both seeing them and explaining them, it's something that sticks with them very quickly. All right, and last but not least, mental math strategy number four to teach your students is called constant difference. Now this strategy is basically like a 2B strategy because just to show you quickly, when we were talking about compensation, here, and I told you about the subtraction one, it does work with the subtraction. I told you if they add two here to make a friendly number, after they solve, they need to add two again on the other side, right? So it's gonna be a compensation strategy, but instead of adding the two at the end, so doing it on one side and then on the other side, we are going to do both of it on the side before we solve. So when I look at 61 minus 27, again, looks like a tricky problem, but I know I can make a friendly number here by changing this to 30. And I can do that by adding three. Now, 
I could use that compensation strategy, solve it like this, and then go ahead and add it on the other side, or I can just add three right now. So 61 plus three is going to be 64, minus 27 plus three is 30. 64 minus 30, much easier to solve, much friendlier, is going to be 34. That's the difference. I don't need to make any adjustments now because I did it beforehand. Let's look at 50 and 28. Here I can go ahead and add two. Let's see, I can add two here, I can add two here, and this would be 52 minus 30 to give us an answer of, for some reason in my head I thought that was 12, that took like way too long, to get a difference of 22. So it's the same type of strategy, but you can do it beforehand. When you're explaining why this works with students, an open number line is going to be an easy way to kind of model this. Um, again, for them to understand kind of what's happening here, why does this work? Why does 61 minus 27 gave us the same difference as 64 minus 30? And what you can do is you can show them here we have 61, we're gonna do minus 27, just use like an open number line. We know the difference is 34, so we can just show that here. What we're showing them is that if we go ahead and add three here, one, two, three, and now we're starting here. So if we add three on this side of the number line and then we also add three on this side of the number line, our hop from one to the other is still going to be the same. We're just taking that difference, that you know arch here on the number line, our difference, and we're just moving it. We're moving it up three here and on this side, or we're subtracting it. If we're doing it both to the minuend and the subtrahend, the difference is not changing. It's similar to thinking about how my mother and I, the difference in our age stays the same every year, even though her and I get older, right? Like our difference, the difference between our ages is always the same. All right, so those are four different mental math strategies that you should model and teach to your students and also make sure you are incorporating them into your math talks. Now, the way I wrote out everything on my board here when I was explaining it to you is exactly how I would write it out as students explain their reasoning and as I explain my reasoning with my students. I would use the little carrots to show decomposition. I would go ahead and use an open number line to help make sense of it for students. But as students get used to these strategies and you are hosting a math talk with your class, ask them how they solved it, write down all the steps they're taking, and then name their strategy. Now, I hope this didn't sound too tricky to you. I will let you know that I was just with a first grade classroom in March. Let me see, it's May now. Yeah, about two months ago in March, I was with the first grade classroom that I work with all the time, and we were able to do a bunch of those strategies. Students were able to name them. We talked about it. I wrote it down on the board. It can work. You have to feel confident doing it, so feel free to watch this video a few times. Really understand each strategy before you teach it to your students, but then they'll be flying. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.